Hey guys, so we're out here on Saturday working on the engine for the 95. She's out here giving me a hand. Um, so we pulled a couple things off and I didn't have the camera on yet, but that's all relatively normal stuff. Um, so I got the cylinder head all together. I ended up doing a valve job on it, which you guys probably, I posted or put a couple pictures up. I put 60 pound valve springs on it, uh, which are technically 165s. Um, we surfaced it, surfaced and O-ringed. So nothing super special about it, but well in Rome, you know, might as well. And what we're doing right now, I'm probably, I'm gonna put this into time-lapse, but what we're doing right now is we're gonna pull some of the bits off the front. We're gonna pull the timing case off because I don't want to, I don't want it to leak and I don't know if this engine leaked. So we're just gonna reseal the engine. So we're gonna pull the timing case off, the oil cooler off, the injection pump off, get it on the stand. There's the old water pump. Um, we are going to throw this up in time lapse, and uh, when we get to a spot that we find something funky, or hopefully we don't, because I would like to use this engine, um, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, we will uh, see you after time lapse or when we find something broken. All right, guys, so we got the oil pan off this thing now, and we're getting into pulling this front cover off. Now, on the front cover, now obviously we have it flipped upside down. The reason for, whoop, wrong side, is the tappets will fall down so that you can pull the camshaft out. So when you're this far into it, you just pull, there's this bolt and this bolt, and then there's some bolts in behind the timing case that you have to take off, and then two, 13 mil headed, which are eight mil bolts, but 13 mil headed. And then the camshaft's gonna pull out and then we'll get this cover and all that cleaned up. Um, and then before I go to put it on there, um, I will come talk to you guys off a of time lapse for a minute um, about um, how we put them on so that they don't leak afterwards. So throw back in the time lapse. I just wanted to mention that a little bit. Um, when you're flipping it over, this is easy. You know, the easiest way to do it is when you have it flipped over, obviously. So, all right, we're gonna throw back in the time lapse. All right, guys, so we're going to show something you want to do whenever you have an oil pan off one of these things is you want to show, or you want to show, you want to look to see the oil squirters. So I'm just going to show you one. We already checked them all. Um, I'll get Shay to hold the camera for me and see if we can, see if he can show. Where's your camera? Yep, yeah, there, right there. I can, can see, you see it. it. Yeah. So in the video, you can see the oil squirter. See that little yellow tip? Yeah, yellow. Sometimes they're green. Just depends on what size, what, what they are. Now, the number two journal number one doesn't have one the number two journal you can't see the squirter because it's actually the way that it's in the casting so just to forewarn you on that um and we didn't really see anything funky as far as that goes so basically at this point we just got a bunch of stuff in the parts washer which we just turned off for a second but um we're going to clean up all the surfaces clean up the outside of the block a little bit um, get everything washed up so that we can do reassembly now something we did find uh, I'm gonna put a different camshaft in it because this camshaft, it has some wear that we don't like. So, let's see. Right over by the door. I just wanna see, I wanted to find it first. That one? Oh yeah, that one right there. Get out in the light here. Yeah. Let's see it there. See it in there? So the camshaft on that lobe. You can get the light to cascade. Yeah, they can see it right there. That that lobe has, I don't know. It's one of those things. I think it has something to do with the way it's casted. Because you will see it. And honestly, you could run it like that. Recommended, no. But you could run it like that. I'm not going to. We're going to put a different camshaft because I have a different used camshaft to use. So we're going to put a different camshaft in it. But I just wanted to show if you pull it apart and it has that, I personally wouldn't run it. Um, but you know, if you have no other option, then you have no other option. But if you look at how, how, what, how that looks and then how this one looks, this one's flatter than this one. So this is going to wear out. So just so you forewarn, or if you're getting to the point, actually, there's another one right there. There's more than one that's like that. That one's not quite as bad, but no, it is still 
So Got a bunch of chewy marks in the tip of it. Yeah. So the tappets look okay. So I'm not going to do anything. Or the tappets. The, uh, um, yeah, the tappets look okay. So we're going to leave those alone because we're just putting a used cam shaft in it. Um, so we're just going to use a different one. Get everything washed up. And uh, we'll be back at you guys when we um, find something else to talk about. One, two, three, four. <laughs> All right, guys, so we got it all kind of cleaned up. You guys probably seen in the time lapse. O'Shea was scraping gaskets, and I kind of cleaned up the um, the surface on it. Um, I'm not getting super carried away. I just wanted to get it kind of degreased so we can shoot a little bit of paint on it so it's not completely ugly. I'm going to paint this one red against bed against better judgment. Um, I don't usually, I usually just paint everything black, but doing something different. So we'll do this one red. Um, so we're getting to now, we're going to put the um engine cover back on or engine camshaft housing front timing housing whatever you want to call it um we're gonna put that back on and what i use is gm case sealant is what i use for that so this is the stuff that i use for you guys that don't know um no gasket just this stuff this stuff basically holds the duramax together so and they need all the help they can get so if it's good enough for a Duramax, it should be good enough for an old rattle box, Cummins. So I'm gonna, we're gonna get that all done, put it on, and then I found a different, I had a different camshaft, used camshaft, we're gonna use that in this. Uh, it doesn't have any lobe damage. So um, we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then um, after we get that in, we're gonna roll it over and I'm gonna clean the <laughs> guys so i figured i would show i don't think i've ever shown this before taking out uh, dowel pins um this is this is actually a snap-on one but you can buy cheap ones of these it's just a uh, plug remover all you do is stab that in there tap it in there a little bit and then take a pair of vice grips and sometimes these are still ignorant to get out but sometimes they come out really these ones are tight though you take a big, really expensive screwdriver that you shouldn't pry with, you pry with it, you just pry up on it, and then it comes out. Bing. And then you can use usually use the same ones, and you just have to sometimes hit them with a file and clean them up a little bit, but for the most part, you can reuse them. All it does is you put a little, a couple little chewies in the, in the side, but if you take a file and just knock them down, and then usually, like the piece that you serrated, I guess you would say, you want to hammer that into the block. But we're going to go, oh, so I guess, well, well we're not in time lapse. I use these carbide. There's a, I'll put a link down in the description for them. I have done that before. Um, and they're also in my, my Amazon store for these um, cleaners. So this is just a carbide edge on it. But for cleaning, well, Shea was using it just not that long ago. They work great. They work really good. Now, you, on these, you do want to watch because that's an oil hole. Try not to knock any garbage down in there because it's an oil hole. I always try and scrape away from those. So what I'm going to do for scraping this whole thing is, because I'm going to scrape the whole thing like this. You guys probably aren't going to want to watch me scrape the whole thing. What we're going to do is we're going to lay it down on its side. Um, it'll be this side, I guess. Um, I'm going to scrape it all down and then... Um, I'll go over it with the sanding block a couple times, see what it looks like, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Because this one's, it looks really na nasty, but it's really not, it's not that bad. It's like, just like a discoloration on it for the most part. It's really not that bad. And the bit of crud so, that's there is coming off pretty easy. Yeah, so. And the only reason that um, I want to lay it on its side, you can do it different ways. You know, you can just pack your cylinders with rags you can use tape to tape off the cylinder on the inside so the stuff doesn't fall into the rings. Because you're just trying to stop the stuff from going. But anyway, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm just gonna get this all cleaned up. We're gonna tap all the holes, um, make sure all the holes are clean. So we'll put that into time lapse because nobody really is gonna wanna watch me do that real time because it'll probably take me 45 minutes. Um, and then we're going to get the head gasket on, the head sitting on here and get the head torqued down. And then I'll talk a little bit about taking the camshaft while the head is on, um, just so that you guys know how to do that. 
So anyways, we'll throw you back in a time lapse and we'll go from there. All right guys, so we got this surface cleaned up. You guys probably seen me, I used the wire wheel on the hand grinder and then I gave it a buff or a, a, bit, a bit of a clean with the um, carbide scraper. And then I took my sanding block. Now I've done videos on this before. Some of you guys probably haven't been around it long enough to see them, but I actually make these sanding blocks. Uh, they will be on the website when the website's up. Um, it's just a three quarter inch piece of plate. The, the ones that I make here, actually I'll show you. That was one that I made a long time ago. And I just, I don't need a new one. There's nothing wrong with it. Something you buy, you'll never have to deal with it again. But these are the sanding blocks that I make. These are the sanding blocks. And the new ones, I just use um, magnets to hold the paper on. And then I machine the flat edge. That's why there's tape on it so it doesn't get screwed up. Um, but you just use magnets to hold the paper on. They seem to work quite well. And it does clean that surface up really nice. You know, it maybe took us five minutes maybe um, of sanding obviously a little bit of cleanup because i used wd-40 on the surface and then you have to clean it up but a lot, most of what's left there is now staining now when you're cleaning it out obviously if the engine's in the truck you can't flip it over like we did and brake clean it really well also i ran a tap in all the holes um, what you can do is if you put a little bit of oil in the cylinders and then roll the motor back and forth and then wipe the cylinder out you'll get 99 percent of the dirt out that way so, and then like we said before, just try to avoid getting a bunch of crap in these oil holes if you can. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna throw the head gasket on it, um, the head on and torque the head down. Um, all you guys have seen me do that um, or probably have done it. Something that I am gonna do on this being that we're not getting into this block a major amount is in this area here, it's always low here and they like to leak. So I am gonna put a little tiny bit of case sealant in around this area. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then also here where this rust is, there's rust, you get rust jacking in there. I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of case sealant there to stop that rust. So anyways, that's what uh, you'll see me doing. Um, and we're gonna get the head on this thing and uh, get it torqued down. And then I see I need to change this frost plug too, or core plug, whatever you wanna call it, expansion plug, cause it's pretty crusty. So we're gonna change that too, probably when I get the front cover and stuff on. So. But we're running out of time today. It's starting to, uh, it's a Friday or a Saturday, sorry, at 5.30. So starting to run out of time. But we'll get the head bolted on today for sure. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, guys. So I just remembered, I wanted to put this side cover on before I put the head on. Just, I don't want, I wasn't going to take this bracket and stuff off. So it's easier. Now this side cover is off of VP44 engine because it doesn't have the vent in it. The reason that I'm going to use this is because we're going to use the valve covers with vents and I'm probably going to put two of them on. Probably one to start with, see if that's enough. If it's not, then we'll put two. But that's the reason I'm doing this because I don't want I don't want it to uh, it to vent underneath the truck like that because I'm going to put it into a blow-by box. Um, anyways, what I wanted to mention was these aren't the right bolts. These are just the bolts that I'm going to use because I'm using the other style washers because I don't have any of the big ones. So I just went to the bolt bin and grabbed these. Um, but on these gaskets, what I like to do is if you look in there where the where the the groove is for the, the tablet cover to go in, what I do is I put um, case sealant on the inside of that groove, and then I put a little bit on the outside as well. Um, I found doing that, this gasket will never move, and you never have to worry about it leaking. So it, I've done it that way lots and lots of times, never had an issue. One thing you do have to watch is when you put it on there, you snug the bolts down, don't tighten them to start with until 20, 15 or 20 minutes, and then tighten them the rest of the way. Um, because if you tighten them right away, what'll happen is, is you'll squish the gasket out um, because of the case sealant. So just thought I'd forewarn on that one, be careful. Um, and for these ones, you don't have to use a Cummins one. It's just, that's one, I had one in stock for a Cummins one. Um, you can use mall ones, Victor or Victor Rhymes, uh, Flow, uh, Flow Pro, um, Fell Pro. Doesn't matter, it's just this is the one that I had in stock. So 
Anyways, we're going to go into time lapse back to doing that and then we're going to put the head on. Um, but I just thought I better should put that on before I put the head on because it's just easier to put in. So, all right, back to time lapse. All right, guys, so we got the head, the cylinder head on this thing, um, everything torqued down. And I did put a little bit of silicone on where uh, the rust jacking happens there on the on the head. Uh, we torqued everything down 135, no problems, studs feel good, all that type of jazz. Um, I don't think I have anything really else to talk this week. I'm thinking next week this engine is going to be completely together and painted, ready to go in the truck. I don't know if I'm going to start working on putting it in the truck that fast, but the engine will be ready. So that'll be perfect. Um, I do have all the interior to work on the shorty. So I'm going to start putting the interior back together next week on the shorty. So I'll be working on this and the shorty next week. So be some videos from that. And then we'll probably do the versus video from the um, 6.7, the new 6.7, the 19 plus 6.7 versus the old 6.7 next week as well. So we have a bunch of stuff going on next week. So stay tuned and uh, like, subscribe, hit me down in the comments. And remember, it's not rocket science.